what is the one thing that God wants from us that will cause Him to bypass a thousand people and zero in on you with favour and delight? What is that one thing? Faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith always gets God's attention. Why? Because faith justifies God and makes the devil a liar. On the other hand, unbelief justifies Satan and makes God appear to be a liar. Listen carefully, all right? It's all right if you are battling with unbelief and doubt in your heart, but expose yourself to the Word of Christ. Expose yourself to the Word of God because you don't have faith, faith cometh. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing and hearing. The idea there is keep on hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. And again, the context there is hearing through a preacher because you keep on reading, it says, how shall they hear without a preacher? Now today we say we can hear God direct. We can hear God direct. Yeah, but, but there is also a danger that you think you are hearing God but there is always safety when a preacher preaches uh, openly, all right? His message is, uh, it can be uh, uh, openly tested, amen? Scrutinized by everyone, amen? Whether it's in line with the scripture or not, amen? There's safety there. And that faith that comes by hearing is hearing the word of God from the mouth of a preacher. It's the preach word that brings faith, hallelujah. Faith is a rest. Rest means it's not you putting in the effort to produce that work. It's not you behaving right, then you receive from God. Amen? It's not based on all that anymore. It is the, based on the work of another. Now, when you see that, when you believe right, you will live right. It's always that. But it's not the other way around. It's not by living right, you end up believing right. No, no, it's the other way around, friend. Amen? If you believe right, you will always live right. Amen? Even if you fall away, you will never forget because you have belief right. What is the right way? God's true nature. Amen? The prodigal son had some believing right. When he was in the pig pen, he said of his father, and this is believing right, the father is that generous, the father is that kind, and he said, in my father's house, there's bread enough and to spare. Even all the hired servants, they eat well. And he believed right about his father. That's what motivated him to turn towards God. And that's why it's so important for us to have a good opinion of God because faith is also a good opinion of God. Amen. Like, like Sarah. Through faith, Sarah receives strength to conceive seed. The word strength there is dunamis. Sarah receives strength to conceive seed. Why? It says through faith, Sarah receives strength. Dunamis, dynamite power to conceive seed when she was past the age of childbearing. Now notice through faith, so let's say faith is a good opinion of God. Let's replace the word faith there and we won't do injustice to the scripture there because faith is a good opinion of God. Through a good opinion of God, Sarah receives strength to conceive seed. Holiness is not the reason for us possessing our promised land. If, if Israel had gone by their uh, holiness, amen, they would ne never have entered the land. No. It was their unbelief that kept them from the promised land. It's very clear. They didn't believe God. They didn't believe the spies when they came back and said, this land flows with milk and honey. Flows, my friend. The idea of superabundance, flowing with milk and honey. They didn't believe. It was unbelief. And the Bible says very clearly in Hebrews 4, so we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. And the word there is from the Greek word, uh, unpersuaded. They are not persuaded. The opposite of faith, unbelief. They didn't believe. Their heart is not persuaded that God is so good. In fact, they said uh, in Deuteronomy 1, because the Lord hated us, He will not bring us into the land. The Lord hated us. He's going to deliver us to the enemy. They didn't believe in the love of God for us. And many believers today, they're not possessing the land because they have a bad opinion of God. You know, Sarah received strength to conceive seed. And uh, it was because she had a good opinion of God that even she, though she's past the age of Childbearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Hallelujah. She believed the word of uh, uh, the preacher. Amen. And, and you know that the preacher actually came to their house one day with two angels and told Abraham, this time next year, Sarah will conceive. 
and Sarah laughed. So unbelief was actually part of her initial response. But, but later on, she trusted God. She came to a place of being persuaded, fully persuaded that God will do the good things that He said He will do for her. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to share with you a testimony talking about uh, Sarah conceiving, you know, seed in her old age. Here is a testimony from a lady that just came in. A sister from our church. And she says, My husband and I had had a desire for a baby for many years. In 2019, I decided to go for an IVF as I was getting older. However, it was not successful. In 2020, I tried again and failed again. I was sad and also lost. It was during an online service on Sunday, 8 November 2020. Pastor Prince prayed over someone for a fruitful womb and I immediately claimed the blessing for myself. He also mentioned that God would resurrect the womb regardless of age. I felt so encouraged after the prayer. In late 2020, I received the news that I was pregnant with twins. My baby boys were born healthy in July this year. God has completed my family with not one, but two babies. Praise God. We have a picture here of the twins, beautiful twins. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, this lady had faith that in spite of her, her age, yet she believed. She believed in God. What did she believe about God? That God wants to give her a baby even in spite of her age. Praise the Lord. Now, how did she believe that? She believed that because she kept on hearing the word from a preacher. In this case, it's me. Amen. But imagine if the preacher says this, right? Don't, you know, you know let's, let's not raise people's hopes up and let's not, you know, when they're a certain age and all that, don't, don't like believe, make them believe God, they'll be disappointed. But the Bible says, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. People say things like, don't raise people's hopes. But the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. If we don't hope for it, and hope always has got to do with the future, all right? Faith has got to do with now. But faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you don't hope for it, and hope, Bible hope, elpis, the Greek word, is always a positive expectation of good in our future. If we raise people's hopes, praise the Lord, we raise it up scripturally based on the Word of God, they will never be disappointed. There's a verse that says this, hope that maketh not ashamed, or hope that does not disappoint. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. We know and we are assured that God loves us. Praise God. So I mean to keep on believing. If you're believing God for a baby, amen, regardless of your age, just like this sister here, in the name of the Lord Jesus, receive this prayer right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak fruitfulness to your womb and I speak fruitfulness to your husband. In the name of Jesus, you shall conceive and bring forth a child to the glory of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will mark this sermon because this is a time you receive from the Lord this miracle. Now you are pregnant with a miracle, not yet with a baby, but it shall, it shall manifest in the days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, receive that. Receive that. I felt, felt inspired, all right, led by the Spirit to pray that for you. Praise the Lord. The Promised Land. The land of the Bible. The very land through which our Lord Himself walked. Hi. I'm Joseph Prince, and I'll be your personal guide, helping you discover the land of Israel. My brand new book, Expedition Promised Land, Walk Where Jesus Walked. Through this book, I take you on a 10-day visual journey to discover Israel as if I were your personal guide. There's just something about being in Israel. The Bible comes alive in a special and intimate way. Everything about it, its rich history and culture, its topography and its landscape. Everywhere you turn and in everything you look at, the rocks, the trees, the ancient practices, 
are pictures of our Lord Jesus and what He has done for us at the cross. As we explore Israel together through this book, my prayer is that you will see a living Saviour in this ancient land. We'll explore the region of Galilee, where our Lord Jesus calmed the storms, multiplied the loaves and fishes. We'll also be visiting the old city of Jerusalem, where His Passion took place and where the early church was born. Filled with stunning photographs, page after page, and breathtaking video footage, this book will help you visualize what it'll be like to be at many different locations around Israel. My team and I have also included helpful maps, diagrams, illustrations, and Bible timelines. These visual aids will give you a better understanding of the historical and spiritual significance of the sites. This is indeed my most ambitious publishing project to date. I pray that you'll walk away encountering our living Saviour afresh as we journey to this beautiful land that He Himself walked upon. Friend, join me to encounter Jesus in a deep and personal way to the pages of this book, and your life will never be the same. Joseph Prince's latest book, Expedition Promised Land, Walk Where Jesus Walked, is now available. Get your copy today. Hi, I hope you were blessed and encouraged by this video. If you were impacted by this message, let us know by liking it and leaving a comment below. Lastly, feel free to subscribe to get more inspirational content every week. See you again real soon. God bless you.